sorry for the delay. Um, so my name is Srijit, I'm from Aisha Pune. Uh, I'll be telling you about uh, some work on uh, uh, properties of zeros of fractional quantum Hall wave functions. Uh, Ajit had uh, given a nice introduction to various uh, wave functions that describe uh, fractional quantum Hall states. I'll be talking about some properties of uh, those wave functions when seen as a, a symmetric polynomial. Uh, and uh, there's a whole lot of work on this way of thinking about these wave functions. I'll be focusing on one line of, take it to the one line of uh, uh, work which is related to applying these ideas to understand some constraints in the quantum Hall wave functions, primarily described in this work. And I'll briefly also use, show some results from one of the recent but uh, unpublished work. Okay, before, uh, since this is a somewhat of a more general audience, let me give a few preliminary comments, uh, some of which I see that uh, Ajit had already mentioned, but anyway, I'll repeat them. Um, for, this, for the purpose of this talk, I'll be, I'll be working with, in a gauge where there is a rotational symmetry uh, in which, uh, because of the magnetic field, the single particle uh, states of the electrons uh, or the single particle states uh, that we are uh, talking about are of the form z to the power of m, m being some non-negative integer times a Gaussian factor. And z is the uh, complex coordinate x plus i y or x, plus x minus i y uh, describing the uh, 2D surface. Um, and the key thing that uh, comes into play in most of, the disc, uh, of these discussion is, uh, are a, is a result of uh, this function being uh, holomorphic. Uh, and for the rest of the discussion, I'll not you, uh, then show this, fact, this Gaussian factor. It won't be uh, of importance for the uh, purposes of this talk. Uh, we'll assume that the particles are bosonic. This is just for, simpli uh, for simplification of the discussions. Uh, most of the discussion, most of the ideas that I present can be ma mapped to a scenario where the particles that we are considering are interacting for fermions. Uh, the many particle states of these, uh, uh, constructed out of these single, part constructed from this single particle Hilbert space has this uh, form. If I have two particles, the uh, basis states uh, for describing this two particle Hilbert space has, uh, can be written, a basis choice for the two particle Hilbert space can be chosen to be something like this, uh, which is a symmetrization of uh, uh, two particles uh, where uh, the particles are at uh, angular momenta n1 and n2. By the way, this number, this integer m, corresponds to an angular momentum of this uh, particle. Okay. So each uh, basis state can be written, uh, can be labeled by a pair of numbers n1 comma n2. In general, when you have a n particle Hilbert space, it can be written uh, in the basis of a symmetric polynomial or monomial symmetric polynomials which have this form. And uh, each basis state can be labeled using a, par uh, a par integer partition of this form. And in, by integer partition, I mean a set of integers, non-negative integers such that this property is satisfied. The fact that we are working with uh, bosonic states allow me to have less than or, or greater than or equal to rather than just greater than. All right, um, now just, this is a very broad comment. Um, uh, the, uh, as I pointed out, the uh, single particle states are holomorphic functions. Now when there are repulsive interactions between uh, the particles involved, the repulsive interactions can be minimized by diminishing the density of uh, other particles at the location of each particle, that is, uh, through terms of this form. And as you can see, uh, well, this, these kind of terms force zeros of particle zi on the particle z1. And in general, so a combination of holomor holomorphic nature of the single particle functions plus uh, a requirement to minimize the interaction energy implies that there are geometric phases of each particle sort of located around every other particle. Equivalently, there are zeros of the wave function attached to every particle. For a general wave function, uh, general uh, variational wave function, uh, similar to what uh, Ajit had mentioned in the earlier part of his talk, 
uh, there are sets of uh, sets of zeros attached to clusters of various number of particles. And the pattern M, the number of zeros attached to clusters of K particle, uh, partially characterize these variational wave functions. And the talk will be an attempt at uh, uh, putting some constraints on certain, uh, understanding certain constraints in these wave functions when uh, using uh, the idea that these wave functions can be thought of as symmetric polynomials. Okay, so the broad motiv motivation for asking this question is this. Um, if you have a Coulomb interaction, um, if, you, if you look at the spectrum of the Coulomb interaction at filling fraction one, one over n, then um, it has a gapped ground state, which, can, which, which is well approximated and also adiabatically connected to the Laughlin state. And this Laughlin state turns out to be the densest exact zero energy ground state of, uh, uh, of certain special Hamiltonians. Uh, it's, I'll describe what the symbol means. Uh, it's a ground state of the B0 uh, pseudo-potential interaction if it is uh, uh, if the state is at filling fraction one half and it is the ground state of V1 pseudo-potential if, if the state is at filling fraction one third, etc. cetera. Uh, you can construct similar exact Hamiltonians for other interesting states. Um, Ajit, towards the end of his talk, had mentioned the superconducting state of uh, the composite fermions that corresponds to the moore reed state and you can construct an exact Hamiltonian uh, for that, exact Hamiltonian in this sense. Now, coming to what this means, the Vn interaction means that there is an energy cost whenever two particles are in a state of relative angular momentum n. Okay, the, um, and indeed you can generalize it to a scenario where you say that there is a Hamiltonian for which there is an energy cost for n particles whenever those n particles are in a state of relative angular momentum m. So you can generalize this idea. Nevertheless, this V0 and V1 correspond to two particle interactions. Uh, the fact that these Laughlin states form exact zero energy states imply of this Hamiltonian imply that the electrons in this Laughlin state sort of move around strictly avoiding certain specific con configurations. Now, we can ask a related question. Uh, if you look at the Coulomb interaction spectrum at filling fraction n over pn plus one, um, um, it turns out that uh, there is a gapped ground state which is adiabatically connected and well approximated by uh, the Jain CF state which uh, Ajit had explained in detail in his talk. And uh, it turns out that the, except for the specific case where n is equal to one, in which case these states uh, become equivalent to the Laughlin state, except in that case, the, uh, you don't get an exact Hamiltonian uh, which similar to the, these uh, Hamiltonians that I had discussed. Imp that sort of implies that the constraints in these electronic states are not fully understood. So we let try to make some statements about the constraints in these electronic states uh, from knowing the patterns of zeros of these symmetric polynomials. Okay, instead of directly uh, proving statements and making general uh, statements about these symmetric polynomials, I thought it would be better to give examples of what I'm going to, what I'm uh, talking about, because previous attempts at giving this talk, I had trouble completing the talk in, uh, <laughs> when I made more general statements about these. Um, so, uh, let's let's take a simple polynomial M4200, which uh, using the notation that I had introduced earlier uh, uh, in my talk, is a symmetrization of Z1 to the power of four, Z2 to the power of two, Z3 to the power of zero, Z4 to the power of zero. Now, let's uh, play this game uh, where I send all but one for particle, that one particle being Z, uh, far away from the origin. Then it turns out that this, wave func this function becomes just a constant. That means that there are no zeros when this particle Z is sent close to zero now, the wave function does not vanish, in, which means that the wave function is uh, a constant in this scenario. Now, if I send all but two particles far away from the origin, it turns out that the uh, wave function is again a constant. Now, if I send all but three particles, let's say Z and two other particles, E1, E2, keep them close to zero, but send the other particle to zero, uh, far away from zero, then it turns out that Z sees two zeros near the origin. 
that you can check by just plugging in these uh, variables into this uh, expression. And I can send all the particles close to uh, the origin. It turns out that ZC is four zeros close to the origin in that, says, in that case. So there is a pattern, 0024, that is generated. And these are the number of zeros that the particle, uh, the particle Z sees when successive number of particles are sent close to the origin. Now it's not very, uh, as you can guess, this is just exactly the pattern, the, the, pat the part, uh, integer partition that I have written, okay? So this doesn't seem terribly surprising. Now we can ask what happens if there is a, a linear combination of these M's. Let's say, for example, M lambda one plus M lambda two plus M lambda three. Now, again, let's play a, a game where I construct a, a cumulative partition. By cumulative, I mean if I, so these, the, these three numbers are written down here, lambda one, uh, lambda one, lambda two, lambda three, I can, construct a cumulative partition where each number here is the sum of all the numbers starting from the right hand side. So from a partition lambda, I can construct a new partition k where ki is the sum of all the numbers starting from i in this partition. Okay, so then 3210 becomes 6310. So for example, this three corresponds to zero plus one plus two. So I hope that's clear. Now, with this k defined, I can define an ordering in the space of partitions. I say that two partitions lambda and lambda two are related by a, a greater than symbol if for all i, k prime is less than or equal to k i, okay? So in this case, if I look at these three, six zero 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 is all, every term of six zero 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 is lesser than every term of all these, or the other two. Which means that by this definition of ordering, six zero 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 is lesser than the other two partitions. Now, the, you, something that you can prove is that if I have a linear combination of uh, symmetric monomials, symmetric polynomials like this, um, the, the uh, zero pattern is given by the maximum of uh, lambda one, lambda two, et cetera, uh, maximum constru constructed using this ordering uh, rule. So the zero pattern of this uh, linear combination of monomial symmetric poly polynomials would be six zero zero zero, okay? Now that is useful because uh, as you can imagine, these variational wave functions that uh, we wrote down are going to be some linear com complicated linear combinations of these monomial symmetric polynomials. Now, it turns out that the, the ordering that I defined here is not a full ordering of the set of partitions. It's not like a lexicographic ordering where, you know, like in a dictionary, you can order every partition. You can ask whether a, a partition is less than or greater than any other partition. It turns out that this particular definition of ordering uh, is not a full ordering. So if I try to construct a tree like this where lower uh, rungs, lower uh, levels of this tree means that uh, they are lesser than higher levels of tree, the tree looks like this. There is no way of comparing whether this uh, node is lesser than or equal to this node. So uh, it forms a partial ordering of the space of partitions. But it turns out that if you look at all the monomial symmetric polynomials or all the partitions that with non-zero coefficients that occur in expansion of uh, quantum Hall state, they always form a tree like this. All the partitions that occur will be such that there is one partition that dominates uh, all the other ones, okay? And, there, and that partition is called the root partition of, a, of the wave function. And because there is one partition that dominates all the other uh, partitions that occur in the expansion of the wave function, you can say that the zero pattern that you see when you take a quantum Hall wave function will be described by the root partition. So for the Laughlin state that, uh, uh, Ajit mentioned the Laughlin state at filling fraction half, the root part 
root partition turns out to be 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, et cetera. And the Laughlin state of filling fraction one third, it turns out to be 0, 3, 6, 9, 12, et cetera. Um, and this can be shown by just inspecting the wave function carefully. Similarly, for the state that I mentioned, the state at uh, n over, the simplest state that I uh, mentioned earlier, n over pn plus one, that is the simplest state of that form that is not a Laughlin state, corresponds to the two-thirds two state. And that has a root partition which has a slightly non-trivial form, uh, 0, 0, 2, 4, 5, after that, it happened, it, this occurs in steps of two, seven, eight, skip, uh, 10, 11, skip, 12, 13, 14, skip, et cetera. It has a nice structure. Um, so we know the root partition of this uh, uh, Jane CF state. Now, given that we know the root partition, it turns out that we can put some constraints on what are the states of config, subsets of, uh, uh, or let's say sub, clusters of particles inside these quantum hall states. Example, if, let's say I have a large number, a, a quantum hall state at filling fraction two-thirds, bosonic two-thirds, uh, with, uh, with a very large number of particles. And let's say I'm looking, and that has a root configuration, zero, zero, et cetera. Now, let's say I look at a small cluster of four particles inside that state. Now, you can show, uh, I'll describe this in a moment, uh, you cannot have the state of the, you cannot find that for any four particle state in the state M uh, underscore uh, 6000. Similarly, you can, uh, on the other hand, it turns out you can show by uh, analyzing this configuration that you can find, you may be able to find uh, four particle state uh, four particle clusters in the state described by the symmetric polynomial M subscript 4200 and 3300. Okay. Now this is the this is the nature of the argument. I will not go into the uh, into the details of how we arrive at this. Uh, let's say there is a configuration M subscript 6000 as in part uh, uh, a configuration of this state. Then it turns out then it contradicts this root configuration. Why? In this state, if I send four particles to uh, close to zero, then you should find six uh, zeros attached to that cluster of four particles. Whereas the root configuration of the actual CF state says that there should be only four uh, zeros when a cluster of four particles are sent to uh, the origin. Um, on the other hand, for the the state four particle state described by four two zero zero is allowed to occur because this is in in agreement with this uh, configuration root configuration. Uh, it turns out that the configuration M three three zero zero can occur, and why can it occur? Even though it doesn't look similar to this, it can occur because in the dominance ordering, in the ordering that I had described earlier, 3300 is subdominant to 4200. So even if 3300 occurs, if it is in, in a coherent combination with 4200, then the zero pattern corresponding to 3300 just won't occur. It will only be masked by 4200. Okay. Okay. Using this line of arguments, you can uh, construct uh, you can sort of map out the various constraints that are present in the many particle state. I say, I call it constraint because it basically says that certain configurations of n particle um, subclusters of this big quantum Hall states are not allowed to occur, or, or do not occur in this particular wave function. Okay, so it put it differently, uh, uh, that means that the n particle projector, in this particular case, the four particle projector onto the state 6000 should be, should annihilate the state that we are looking at, okay? So I can construct a Hamiltonian that annihilates the state by adding up all these n particle projectors which are, uh, which corresponds to those states which do not occur in the state, in the many particle state. So using this idea, we mapped out all the uh, constraints 
uh, for 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4 particle clusters, and uh, for total angular momentum of these clusters from 0 all the way to 6. And we could, we could construct a, a set of constraints for all these possible cases. We can enumerate all those constraints which lie between 0 and n, sorry, uh, lie within four particles and with the up to angular moment, total angular momentum six. And you can also uh, show that some of these constraints are mutually dependent and therefore redundant. Um, okay, so that's a rough summary of what we uh, did. Now, I said that there are these constraints, which means that certain configurations do not occur in the variational wave functions. So you might think that this is a property of a specific variational wave function that, you, that I took, but that's actually not the case. Um, so this table uh, shows the data for the variational wave function, and this is the data for the Coulomb ground state that we can get by exact diagonalization. This, uh, the, the Vertical, different vertical columns corresponds to various angular momentum sectors and of four particles. Uh, yeah. Okay. So it turns out that by an analysis similar to this, I can show that the particle cannot, the state will not have any uh, particle in uh, any four particle cluster in a total angular momentum three, total relative angular momentum three state. I can study that in a to big, quantum Hall state of six particles, eight particles, or 10 particles. And in all those cases, in the variational wave function, there is no occupancy of those configurations. And if you check the Coulomb state, you see that again that these are absent. On the other hand, the constraints that I try to construct do not put any, uh, do not constrain the occupancy of uh, the state with partition uh, for 200 or 3300. And as a result, these have finite occupancy. Now, just to clarify, this basically calculates the expectation value of the projector, four particle projector, onto these angular momentum states. So if there is no configuration with that, uh, there is no configuration of that angular momentum, then that projector will be zero. That's essentially the idea. Uh, the point of this table is that these constraints are not merely constraints that are present in some nice looking variational wave functions. These are actually constraints that are there in the Coulomb ground state, gapped Coulomb ground state of the system. Okay. So after carefully analyzing all these uh, uh, set of constraints, you can show that uh, the summary of all the constraints within these sectors, the first six angular momentum and up to four particles is just this pair of constraints. What is this constraint? This constraint is that there are n, uh, if, uh, there should be no occupancy of L equal to zero state of three particles, and there should be no occupancy of L equal to four state uh, of four particles. Uh, now, does this uniquely get me the state that I was looking at? Does this, if, is, the, uh, is the state that I was trying to obtain the two thirds uh, CF state uh, a unique ground state of this? Uh, it turns out no. But how then how constraining is this Hamiltonian? Um, so to study that, uh, we can rewrite the whole calculations on, uh, on the sphere and diagonalize this Hamiltonian. It turns out that for the largest systems that we could diagonalize uh, this uh, Hamiltonian, which was 12 particles, uh, um, the 12 particle system, which had a gigantic Hilbert space, uh, the zero energy space of this contain four states, um, and, the dis uh, and naturally the two-thirds state was one of the linear combinations of this four uh, states. Okay. Uh, so with that, I'll, uh, I have conveyed the, I have basically conveyed the idea that I wanted to uh, uh, say by carefully looking at the sequence of constraints that uh, the zeros of the wave function impose, we can partially pin down a Hamiltonian that annihilates the general state at uh, filling fraction n over, sorry, pn plus one. Um, now, um, I haven't presented all the results that we had. 
uh, it turns out that when there are multiple allowed or multiple configurations possible in a given angular momentum, an example was this case where at angular momentum six, there are various different possible uh, state with that angular momentum. Um, and the constraints imply that T6 is, or the, actually M6 is not allowed, uh, whereas these two states are allowed. Okay. That means that I, the six particle, the, the angular momentum six uh, configuration of four particle could be in a coherent linear combination of these two, T4, 2, and T3, 3 in my notation. Um, so in those case, I can construct a new Hamiltonian, which is H naught, the Hamiltonian, this is what I call H naught, H naught, plus an additional constraint which sort of tries to force the, uh, these two, uh, force a particular linear combination of these two, uh, T4, 2, and T3, 3. It turns out that, and I can diagonalize this Hamiltonian again, and it turns out that a zero energy state occurs only at very specific values of lambda. The, this plot shows the log of the energy of the ground state versus this linear combination lambda. And as you can see, for a very precise pair of uh, values of lambda, I can get a zero energy state. Uh, so one open question which we could not answer properly is under what set of such, uh, what is the general set of constraints under which I can get a zero energy state? And if I solve this, uh, is it possible that the two-thirds state, or more generally the state n over tn plus one, can that be realized as a zero energy state uh, of such a Hamiltonian? Uh, we have managed to use the constraint to partially pin down the Hamiltonian, but um, whether it is strictly possible to get the Hamiltonian that uniquely gets the, uh, the state as the ground state, uh, that is not clear. Uh, just one more point. Uh, uh, so you can ask a more general set of questions related to zeros of these polynomials. You can ask, what are the zeros of a, of a centroid of a cluster of particles attached to another cluster of particles? Let's say I have a cluster of particles and I look at a centroid of, I consider the coordinate described by the centroid of another cluster of particles. It turns out that there are interesting patterns associated with the zeros of these uh, polynomials also. Uh, this was studied in detail by Xiao Gang Men and in a series of papers. Um, the, um, can we, uh, can, we can ask the similar questions in the case of exact Coulomb ground states also and ask how are these, how are the zeros of these exact Coulomb ground state different from the various variational wave functions. Uh, the counting is not going to be different, as I pointed out earlier in the table, but their locations might be different. So how exactly do they differ? Um, we can also ask what happens to zeros of these polynomials if the states live in multiple lambda levels. Uh, it turns out that all these things can be answered using some algorithm that, we that I managed to construct re recently, which we are still working on. Um, and you can actually uh, use that algorithm to plot out the locations of these zeros uh, in a 2D surface. Um, and we are playing with this algorithm to see how these various patterns change as I move various particles. And the nice thing here is that you can ask, how do these co constraints get violated when there is an excitation in the system? Let's say there is a quasi-particle or a quasi-hole. How, how are these con constraints violated in the vicinity of these uh, quasi-holes. In other words, how do the zeros change in the vicinity of, when there are clusters in the vicinity of quasi-holes and quasi-particles? Okay, so that was just a minor advertisement of the next work, but this is the actual conclusion. Thank you very much, both of you. <laughs> 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 <laughs>